Today we're in Sedona, Arizona, and we're gonna take the Pine Mountain 2 out on a trail to see how it fares as a trail bike. Now this bike is an adventure slash bike packing bike. It's meant for hauling loads and kind of exploring. It's not meant for shredding trails, but we're gonna see how it does at that. So we're gonna go take it on some blue and some black trails today in Sedona. I'm out riding with my wife, Dusty Betty, today. If you haven't seen her channel, she focuses on women's mountain biking. So if there's a lady in your life, you're trying to get hooked on mountain biking, or if you wanna learn how to make mountain biking more fun for your lady, go check out Tessa's channel. Okay, two things already about this bike. Number one, it's cool we have all these bolts to bolt stuff on, but this one is interfering with the dropper and I can't lower the dropper anymore. It's a 150 mil dropper. I can almost always run those on a size medium, but not on this frame. So I have to step down to a 125 mil dropper, which is a bummer. I wish I could insert that more. Maybe if I went with a different brand dropper, it'd have not such a long tube down there. That's pretty long. And number two is the bars. It feels like right here at the ends, they bend down and it feels like an old cafe racer where it looks cool, but I don't want my hands in a down position. I want them more up, at least for trail riding. Maybe this will end up being my all time favorite position for bike packing. We'll see, but the bars feel funky. I like that they're trying new things and going with that taller stack that makes it real comfortable, but the shape of the bars just feels weird. This bike's heavy, it's almost 35 pounds, and it feels heavy. Some bikes are heavy and they ride light. This bike doesn't really li ride light. It rides smooth though, this thing's a Cadillac. I'll talk more about that later. 66 and a half degree head angle, 430 chain stay, 430 reach on this size medium. Normally I like a longer reach, but on an adventure bike, I actually prefer 430, where it's a little shorter like this, a little more comfortable. I'm not doing quite as much standing on it. I like that shorter effective top tube. One nice thing about heavy bikes is they usually ride nice. They just feel planted and solid. They don't get bounced around too much. If you've ever ridden a super light bike, they kind of dance underneath you. You hit a little rock and it bounces around a little more. It's a comfortable ride though, very comfortable. Frame feels great. Super supple steel frame. So comfortable, that steel. And you know, I don't think all steels are comfortable, but this one sure is. It is definitely not a light zippy bike. It's not an attack charge bike. It's more like a comfort bike or a cruiser bike on this stuff. It almost feels like those hybrid bikes that people buy for bike paths. The riding position and just the overall feel. It's upright, it's comfortable. You're not in attack position. You're not trying to win any trophies. You're just out enjoying the ride. And I am enjoying it. The components feel a little cheap on this bike. It feels like for $2,000, it should feel a little bit more solid. Wow, I'm feeling the weight. I'm tired. This is a mellow trail and I'm already tired. In other bikes where I'd be charging forward sprinting right now, this bike is like the stoner from the 70s who's just living a chill life and wants to remind you to slow down and chill and enjoy it. Yo, dude, chill out. Just sit back, pedal, enjoy the ride. And the harder you try to push with it, the more it kind of reminds you to chill out, at least on the uphills. It's interesting how some bikes have attitudes, like as you ride them, they make you want to ride a certain way or encourage a certain style more than others. 
this attitude is I'll get there when I get there. Let's enjoy the ride. I'd love to see this spec with an XT shifter, but most people wouldn't know. So that probably wouldn't translate to more sales from Marin. I'm super winded. Her bike is about a half a pound from this. She's not winded. I'm winded. This bike feels like a 38 pound bike despite being 34 and a half. It's just heavy. It's slow to get up to speed. It wears you out. I don't know why. It's the most bizarre thing. My legs aren't tired. I'm fresh. I didn't ride yesterday. But I just feel like the tires are full of water. So despite the fact that I'm clipped in and Dusty Betty's on flats and I'm on an efficient hardtail and she's on a full suspension, she's going to take off from us. Yeah, this just has a hard time getting up to speed. The effective top tube's a little short for a medium. We've got this tiny, tiny stem on here. I'm actually tempted to run a longer stem on this because the seated position feels a bit cramped. Yeah, it claws its way up stuff, that's nice. It's interesting, you know I like a tall stack, but I feel like this thing's kind of wheeling out. Hard to keep the front end down. The cockpit feels cramped. I feel like my knees are at the bars. The head angle feels pretty modern for what it is. You know, the seat tube angle feels good, but the bars just feel really close for this stuff. And keep in mind, I'm taking this bike where it's not intended for the sake of review to help you decide if this is a good buy for you or not. Okay, I absolutely hate these tires on side hills. Sorry to be so negative. I'm, I got nothing against this bike. I actually really want to love it, but I'm going to call out what I'm feeling. So these tires on side hills want to fold and they don't grip, they slide. And here in Sedona, being on a side hill, I don't like that. They look cool with the tan walls. I've gotten more compliments from you guys on this bike from the looks alone because of the tan walls. But the tread's not cutting it right now. It's okay for climbing and flat stuff. But when it gets on a side hill on an off camber, awful. They are supple tires. They feel like they've got a thin sidewall. They flex a lot softer. Okay, this bike's pretty composed on the down. It's not bad. Man, I wish I could use the full range of this dropper. That's a bummer. I'd, if this were my bike, I'd probably swap out the dropper and get something that fits in there better. Even just going down one centimeter would probably make this a usable dropper for me. Power, power, power. All right, it does okay on technical climbs. It's a beast, but it does all right. I want to take this time to thank my patrons who make this channel possible. If you like it and you want to see it succeed and hope that this channel's still around in a year, consider becoming a patron to support it. It's the only way forward that I'm going to be able to do this. And I love doing it, but the amount of work I put into it, it's going to have to become my full-time job, and that's going to require strong patrons. And I really appreciate all my fantastic patrons that I have right now. Now, I know a lot of you have bikes that I review, and you love them, and you get upset when I pick them apart and tell you what I do and don't like about them. But that's the point of a review. You ever read a magazine or mountain bike website where every bike they review is somehow amazing, and they say it's great, and there's no such thing as a bad bike? Those reviews don't help. Those are more marketing and they're meant to sell bikes. They don't really help you decide if it's the right bike for you. So anytime I'm reviewing a bike, if you own that bike, don't get mad if I point out the flaws and compare it to some other bikes because that is the purpose of a review. It's not to make you feel warm and fuzzy because you bought that bike. It's to tell you how it compares to the other ones. So in my reviews, I try to be super direct, tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly so you can make a decision about whether this is a good bike for you or not. If you need additional back and forth, you wanna know additional details, how does bike A compare to bike B? I do all of that through Patreon where I do private consulting with people that are curious before they buy a bike. But I'm gonna tell you straight up how this bike is. Especially at $2,000, I feel like the bar should feel a little bit better. I applaud them for trying something different and I like the, the upright bars and all that. 
I actually feel like the stem's too short on this bike. If this were my bike, I'd run a 50, maybe a 70 mil stem because that reach is really short. The fork, the RockShox 35, it works, but there is a lot of stiction on the seals. If this were my bike, I'd replace them with some SKS seals, see if that fixes it. It just feels kind of notchy. It's not smooth through the travel. It kind of stutters through it. I also don't like these tires. It's interesting, you can see these knobs. This one's wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow. And this pointy edge tries to grab on a side hill and it just ends up rolling. It's a really soft knob. And so it doesn't grab on a side hill. And this is an aggressive tread, so you'd hope it could handle aggressive terrain, but it doesn't. And the sidewalls are soft, they feel like a 120 TPI or maybe even a little bit softer. They're very soft, they're not a stiff sidewall, which gives it a, a nice compliant ride. I like that the rims are 32 mil inner. I wish they were 35, it'd give this an even bigger profile, but 32 is a lot better than 30. I don't feel the tires rolling, I just feel them sliding on the side hills. Now, that is all the negatives about this bike so far. I still am gonna do a full review of this bike packing because that's where it's meant to be used, but there's not a whole lot of info about this, so I figure the more info I can give you, the more informed you can be. This bike is the most supple bike I've ridden, ever. It might even borderline on noodley, where it's not stiff, and it makes for a very comfortable ride. It's like a Cadillac. It's like when you hit those bumps in the road and it just kinda keeps on squishing, and it's such a comfy ride, it's like driving a boat, but it's not super responsive, it's not super twitchy and fast and uh, on edge, which is perfect for a bikepacking adventure bike like this is. So here's what makes it so soft. Number one are the pencil thin seat stays. This is my pinky. It is thicker than the seat stays. That means this can flex a lot more and it doesn't transfer big vibrations up to the seat, up to the front triangle. Another thing that's giving it a compliant ride are these cast seat stays. These are C-channel. They're not complete squares. They're left open. I don't know if that's to save weight or cost or if it was built in compliance. Another thing is this cutout here is for a slight amount of weight reduction, which is kind of silly because I think two of these bolts probably weigh more than that much weight and they could have saved a lot of weight leaving out so many bolts. I think they could have gone like half as many right here. Watch how flexy the bottom bracket area is. That's not the tire flexing, that's the frame. The tire is stiffer than the frame. And that makes for a very smooth, compliant, even borderline noodly ride. If this were a race XC hardtail, I'd call that noodly and I wouldn't want it. For bike packing though, comfort is super important and I love that. And so you get way less vibrations transferred to your body when the frame can flex like that. So when you hit a curb size rock, the frame takes it instead of transferring it to your calves. And on a long day, that is super nice to have the frame absorbing that instead of your joints. So I know I've been critical about some of the parts on this, but the frame is super compliant. It is super comfortable. This thing's like a Cadillac. All right, enough about that. Let's get riding it some more. We're gonna take it down a black diamond way beyond what this bike was intended for. But I know some of you are gonna buy this and ride it on trails like this anyway, so we gotta find out what it can do there. All right, let's take this down ground control, a black diamond, see how it does. This is totally not what this bike was meant for, but guess what? We're doing it, people. These tires break pretty well. Okay, you're gonna swing wide on the left. Swing wide. Yep, look through, you got it, that's it. Perfect, we're halfway done. A little quicker, kind of at trial speeds. Oh, this feels good. Man, this frame is so smooth. Let's see if we can do a little nose pivot. Oh, that's actually pretty fun. You're good. Okay, lean forward. This is the last obstacle, attack position. You're gonna lean into that berm and swing the left when you're at the bottom. Stay loose, lean forward. More speed. Yep, there it is. Yeah! <laughs> so proud of her, cleaning this top to bottom. Woo!
I'm so glad they chose to go with a 65 and a half degree head angle with this. In case you do want to be stupid like me and take it down rowdy stuff like that. Oh, I'm so proud of Tess. Conquered her fears today in a big way. This bike is very comfortable. I love it on the downs, it is fun. You're not gonna mistake it for a rowdy bike like or even a bike like the Specialized Fuse. All right, now the ground control's done and we took it on some chunk there, which it did really well at, thanks to the slack head angle for a adventure bike. That compliant frame really helped. It's almost like having half inch of suspension. The tire just wants to stay on the ground more, doesn't bounce and skip as much. It's funny, someone could ride one of these and get an impression about hardtails and then ride a common saw meta and get a completely different impression about hardtails. Not all hardtails are created equal. It's a completely different riding experience than that meta. Now that we've hit the black diamond, let's take it on some blue stuff. See how it does on a regular trail like what most people would encounter. That actually manual is okay. Okay, this bike has some pep in it for an adventure bike. In fact, this might be the most aggressive adventure bike I've ridden yet with the most aggressive geo. This thing's pretty fun on trails. For an adventure bike, it's great. For a trail bike, I'd want to reach a little longer or a longer stem. I like the high stack when I'm going down, just not when I'm going up. Woo! <laughs> It'll slow jump and get rowdy. Ooh. All these tires have got to go though for this terrain here. Dang, my wife's charging. I can't keep up with her. Yeah, this is fun. I'm dreading to climb out, but this down is fun. <laughs> yeah, between the tires and the frame, it is one compliant ride. Whoa, almost had another wash out there. This is not a good front tire for me. It feels like it has half the cornering knobs it does. This bike's a tank, there's no other way to say it. It's heavy, it rides heavy, it feels heavy, definitely saps your energy. I can't keep up with my wife. This isn't what I would call fun on the flats. It's okay. Yeah, you know, this wouldn't be my first choice as a trail bike. If you got it, can you ride it on trails? Absolutely. And you can have fun, but man, compared with other stuff out there, there are better trail bikes. If there's some downhill and some slope, it's fun. If it's flatter up, it's awful. bike definitely has a solid feel to it under your feet. It doesn't blow around in the wind. I'd probably put it more along the likes of a Surly. With kind of, they're a little bit heavier steel bikes. I don't mind the head angle. Pretty good. Yeah. Now we have a 30 minute slog out of here that I'm not looking forward to. This bike was not meant to be a trail bike, so don't expect it to do well in this category. But anyone who buys a bike 
with knobby tires can be expected to take it on some single track and explore the trails around them and that's why I took this out. I don't love it as a trail bike, it's okay. Maybe different tires would fix that. But the elephant in the room is the weight. This is a heavy bike and it rides heavy on the trail. Climbs are awkward. I'm gonna drop that stem as far as possible for climbs because that front end just wants to lift. The seat angle feels steep and it actually feels good. I like the seat tube angle. I like the seated position. I love the feel of the frame of the back end. It's really flexy and takes a lot of the bumps out. I don't love the fork, but it's okay. I don't know, I feel like for $2,000 it should be a little bit better on the trail and maybe it's just things like the seat, the wheels, cranks and bars that are weighing it down. I hope it's not the frame, but I'd be super curious to strip it all and just see what just the frame weighs and see how light you could possibly build one of these. I'm not a weight weenie. Most of my bikes are over 30 pounds, but pushing 35 here, you really feel it and I felt very fatigued and it sapped some of the fun out of it. It can still be ridden on trails and you can still have fun, but it's a chore. Riding downhill, I'd give it a nine out of 10. It actually feels pretty composed. It'd need a longer reach to be a true trail bike for me. Uh, uphill, I'm gonna give it a four out of 10. I do not like climbing on this. The steeper it gets, the more the front wants to lift. It's just heavy. It's hard to get momentum. It gets over stuff, but you're tired at the end. Cornering with these tires, I'm gonna give it a two out of 10. But with different tires, I think this would corner about eight and a half, nine. It actually corners pretty well. And the bike feels pretty balanced. It feels a little bit old school in the geometry with just kind of how short the front end is, but it's got kind of an old school charm to it. And I'm very fond of the old Marin Pine Mountains. That was my first good steel hardtail. And I love that thing. And I'm glad to see the legacy continuing on with this Pine Mountain. I wish this dropper went down a little bit more, like I've said. Playfulness, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. It was more playful than I thought it would be for its weight. Ride comfort, 10 out of 10. It's so comfortable. It's so flexy and comfortable. Big riders for people who put down lots of power wanna sprint and want a stiff acceleration. It's actually gonna flex a little too much for you, but you don't buy this bike if that's what you're looking for. So good job, Marin, making a compliant steel frame that's super comfortable with rack mounts on the back, with all the water bottle bosses and attachment points. The next step is to truly take this in its environment that it was meant for. It wasn't very fair to judge this today as a trail bike. So the review is still out for this. This is not the final review. If this excels at adventure riding, then it, then it will totally be worth it. And um, this was just an ancillary review to help people understand how does it do as a trail bike? Because I know a lot of you are curious, you like the look of it, you like steel, you like Marin, the price is good for a lot of you. As a trail bike, I would not buy this, but that's not what it's meant for. So stay tuned as we review it in adventure mode and take it on a bike packing trip overnight and see how it does. If you enjoyed this and learned something, consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. Subscribe and like this video and tell your friends about Hardtail Party. We wanna help grow this channel. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.